Thank you for joining us. Welcome to our Coral's nine minute training at 9 a.m. My name is Sam and we have Drew with us today. He'll be showing you how to set your admin and manager access in Core HR. We'll not be able to answer any questions live, but feel free to leave them in the chat and we'll follow with you after the presentation. Drew, I'll give it over to you. Hey, thank you, Sam. Good morning, good afternoon, and happy new year, everyone. Excited to get this kicked off. Um, quick introduction for anyone on the call that does not know me. I'm actually a customer success manager here at Okoro. And today we're going to be diving into um, kind of a philosophy behind setting up admin roles and some basic tips and tricks. Let me go ahead and get this pulled up here. So today, um, four big things we're going to cover are going to be the admin types. And these are three basic admin types that um, I've, I've heard a lot of requests from clients for. So these are ones that I personally have experienced building in the system. Um, so that's more of the philosophy behind the roles. Then we're going to dive into creating some of the roles. A uh, big piece here, test, test, test. We always want to test. Um, any kind of admin role with permissions before we give it to an employee. And then we're going to dive into how to assign the roles to an employee. So looking at the admin types, um, I, I put three here. These are the three that I generally see. One is going to be a super admin. Um, so for a lot of the main HR admins on this call, this is going to be the person in your organization or people that have uh, pretty much complete access. And that's going to be to all employees, any information, they can edit information, export, import, um, also settings information. So when we think about benefits, PTO, ACA, then we dive into someone that might have partial admin access, where they, they are an admin, um, where they can either access information, for everyone, but maybe not update information, um, or they can access updates, but we might not want them to touch PTO policies or some of the settings um, for different modules. And then we have our third tier that we want to think about. Um, I've seen this come up a bit more recently, but we might have scenarios where a manager should be able to access any information for maybe employees that roll up to them, or maybe a division of the company, but they should have limited access, um, meaning they can only see people in one division and they cannot edit information, and maybe they can't see all information. Maybe they can just see demographic information or some compensation information, but no edit capabilities. These are generally the three that I see. Um, the next piece here is going to be how, how do we create these roles? What are we looking to do when we create an admin? Now, when we think about creating admin roles, um, I, I've noticed in the past a lot of clients set up individual roles. That that's okay. Um, however, if we have let's say we have ten people that might need admin access, in some scenarios or in a lot of scenarios, it's going to make sense to make an admin role. Um, that way, I don't have to set up these unique settings for each person. I can actually create a role and then just assign that role to specific individuals that should have the same access. When we create a admin role, the navigation is going to be opening the menu, going to set up administrators. Um, if we're going to set up a custom role, we could just click into an employee and then select their permissions, or we can go to the security rules tab and then create a security role. Little trick here. So when we create a security role, there's gonna be a, um, number one call here is we have to set this as active. Uh, so this checkbox we're gonna always want for any active role or admin. And then a little tip and trick here. There's this checkbox that says limit this administrator's access to employees by excluding any employees who do not, who do not meet all the administrator's employee permissions. It's a bit wordy. Um, there is an information icon to the right up here, and if you hover over it, it gives you a better explanation. 
but for the tips and tricks, I did just put them up here at the top. If you check this box, you will need to check all the boxes for the uh, for the permissions that the employee should not have access to. If you leave it by default unchecked, then you're just going to select the boxes that the employee should have access to. Um, generally, I see number two as the option. So usually, I tend to see clients leave this unchecked and then just check the boxes that you want the person or the role to have access to. I'm going to switch over here and just get this system to show you a quick example. So if I want to set up a, let's say I want to set up a admin role to only give access to employees that fall in one location or division, I'm going to want to get a setup administrators, then security roles, and I'm going to use this action menu to create the security role. Now I, I know this account, so we have two divisions, um, one of which is in Virginia. So I'm going to make this my Virginia security role. This is going to be the title of the security role. Next, I'm going to select this as an active administrator. I'm going to skip through some of the stuff on this page here. Um, but this would give additional access uh, under home page permissions. I'm going to go ahead and save here and dive into the, the meat of this. Um, so earlier on the tips and tricks, we talked about this checkbox right here. I'm going to leave this unchecked. So I only want people to be able to, I only want this admin to access people in Virginia. So next I'm going to go to employee settings. And I know of this account under facilities, uh, which is also locations, we have Virginia. So I'm going to go ahead and select Virginia. And what I'm doing here is I'm saying this role can access anyone that has VA facility selected. Next, I'll save this page. Finally, I'm going to go to page settings. This is where I can decide what specifically should this admin access. So we, we already have it filtered down. It's only going to be employees in that Virginia facility. Now I can say I want this employee to or this role to access demographic information. Maybe I also want them to access compensation. But also on the flip side, maybe I don't want this person to be able to edit this information. So in the far right column, this is going to be our read only checkbox. So I'll also select read only for compensation and read only for demographic information. Now what this would do is once I save this, if I were to assign this role to an employee, it's essentially going to say you can view from the admin side anyone in this Virginia facility and you can view their demographic information and their compensation information but because we selected read only you cannot edit this information now if this was going to be a super admin or someone with more access and they should be able to edit we would want to leave read only unchecked Now, the next piece here is when we create a role, we want to make sure we test it. Um, so a couple of ways you can do that. One is create our security role and assign it to a trusted employee um, that can go through and test this for you and make sure they can't access anything you don't want them to. Or you could even assign this role to yourself uh, to test. Now, if you assign this role to yourself, we need to make sure that we temporarily enable this role to be able to access setup administrators. Otherwise, let's say I assign this to myself, I log out, log back in, go to test it, looks good, I'm happy. I want to assign my original role back to me so I have full access. I wouldn't be able to do that unless I can access 
set up administrators. Now in this role, I would actually enable that right here. So it's gonna be on under page settings, set up administrators. So if I'm gonna test this role myself and assign this role to myself, make sure we check administrators under setup before I uh, save this to myself to test. Once the testing passes, I go back in, change my access back to my original access, log out, log back in, make sure to come back into the role that we created and uncheck this box. Otherwise, when you assign this role out, technically that limited access admin could come into this section here and update their own settings. Now next, creating an admin, very simple. What we'll wanna do is search for the employee that we would like to be an admin, navigate to utilities, general, and then select set employee as admin. So in this case, I'm gonna search for a test employee just to show you. I'll get a Josie test here. And what I'll do, sorry, my meeting is hiding this page. Okay, so I'm gonna go to utilities up here on the top right in general. And I would select set employees administrator. In this case, this employee is already set as an admin, but we would, if they weren't, we would simply select this and okay. Next, I'm gonna navigate back to set up administrators. Click on the employee that I just made an admin and then select their role from the dropdown menu. So I'm back in the system here. I'm gonna navigate to set up administrators. I see my Josie test, so I'll click in here. And I can see my Virginia security role. So I'll select Virginia security role and then click save. Now this would end up giving access to Josie test. Next time this employee logs in, they would actually be landing on the admin page. And Sam, that has covered everything I have in my deck for today. Um, I apologize, I went a few minutes over, but I will pass this back over to Sam. Yeah, no, thank you so much for being with us today. Um, and we also appreciate everyone's attendance. We'll send a follow-up survey, and if you typed a question into the chat, we'll be sure to get back to you as soon as possible. And we look forward to seeing you on the next 9 at 9.